Thank you once again as we read God's word. We welcome you here. If I can have a little more volume, thank you. We welcome you again to Life Garden. Again, show of hands if you're here for the first time. Awesome. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so the first person that comes that's new gets this shirt. That's new today. There you go, brother. That was too quick. No. All right, real quick, before you sit down, have you been following your challenges? Yes? Have you been following your challenges? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, very good. You're respecting yourself? Are you sure? Yes, sir. Is that guy here nice to awesome disrespecting? Oh, do I call y'all out or what? Yes. Oh, call y'all out. <laughs> Don't freak out. You're like, oh, man, I hope you can see me, man. I hope you can see me. All right. Respecting your parents? Yes, sir. Your church? Yes, sir. How many of you have been coming to the Splash Zone? All right. If you have to come to the Splash Zone, remember, that's another challenge. Every Wednesday, it waits for you here. Every Sunday, right at 1 before the countdown finishes. We want you all coming up. Like I said, we got a fellowship coming up real soon. In a couple of weeks, we'll give you more information on that. But we're going to have some fun and good old times and maybe go do some uh, fun activities. But I do want to just throw one out. You remember the first topic that we talked about? We talked about respecting each other. We talked about, uh, we talked about, what do you call it out? Dressing right. And Go ahead, go ahead. Go dressing right and taking care of yourself and doing all that good stuff. Well, let me tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to give you just a little taste of what's coming up in March. We're going to have the first ever annual Lifeguard Spring Fashion Show. And now somebody's saying, what the heck? So several lucky people, I don't like to use the word luck, several blessed people, we're going to draw out your name. We're going to go on a shopping spree. It's going to be your clothes. And then you're going to do the catwalk up here on a Wednesday for a fashion show. Are y'all ready for that? Some of you are going to wear skinny pants that shouldn't. Okay, I'm just joking. You know, we're not going to do that to you. But it's going to be awesome. So look forward to that Lifeguard First Annual Spring Fashion Show. It's going to be off the charts. We're trying to get... How many of you went to the Willisley Fields of Faith? Anybody here? A couple of you. We're going to have that DJ, God willing, that DJ coming from California to do the whole thing. It's going to be legit. So if you're ready for that, it's going to be great. All right, 1 Peter 5.8. Watch what it says. It'll be on your screen. There's a big hiss. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a huge hiss. I don't know what it is, but if you can take it out, please. Watch what it says. Be alert. Somebody say what? Be alert. And uh, help me preach. Your enemy, the prowls around like a looking for someone. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the youth. We thank you for this generation, these next teachers, leaders. Pastors, Father God, these next lawyers, attorneys, doctors, Father God, these next policemen and politicians, Lord, that you are raising right now. You are building them right now. We just thank you, Lord. Now I ask you right now, break their hearts so they can receive from you, Lord. Holy Spirit, speak through me so that this message can be for their lives. And you get out of this building today full with your power. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Would somebody say, Amen. Turn to your neighbor before you sit down and say, Pray or be prayed. All right, you may be seated. Pray or be prayed. We're going to talk about something that I think is very, very important, especially, especially, thank you, thank you, especially in this generation, especially in this generation, we're going to talk about it. And I know adults, young kids, any age, we know that the devil's out to get us. We understand that. I understand that. But I want you all to understand that if anybody is target, if anybody is bait, it's you all. It's you all. Why? Because if the devil can get to you right now and destroy you right now, you'll never know your purpose by the time you're an adult. And therefore, you think you'll get an education and you may make some money, you may get married, maybe buy a house and you think you're set. But you know what? You'll never fulfill your purpose. And there's nothing more saddening to see someone growing up to be 30, 40, or 50 years old youth and never understand what their purpose was. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So watch what it says in 1 Peter 5 8. Again, it says, Be alert. And then it says, And of sober mind, 
your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, let me show you, or let me give you a little story, a true story. We have a boy named J.C. What's his name? J.C. We have a boy named J.C. What's his name? J.C. I need to know if you're awake or not. Don't fall asleep on me. Don't get off your phone. All right? His name is J.C. And every day after school, he was a b-ball. He was a basketball player. Boom, baller. He'd go home, dribble all the way, all the way home. He'd dribble, he'd dribble, he'd dribble. And close to about his house, every time he would get close to his house, he would hear this dog, this mean Rottweiler, growling at him from the fence. You know? Kind of like a girlfriend sounds sometimes. All right, maybe not. But you understand what I'm saying? Growling, and the first time he, he did it, and the first time he was dribbling, he was going, and he heard this thing, he freaked out. But then he said, oh, he's on the fence. He's over the fence, and I got nothing to worry about. Yeah, he looks ugly, he looks mean, he'd probably devour me, but guess what? He's over the fence, I got nothing to worry about. So guess what? Next day, basketball, boom, balling with his beats, he's doing his thing, whatever, whatever. Not even paying attention to the dog anymore, because he knows he's in the fence. So he ball, ball, ball all the way home. Next thing, boom again, doing the thing, and this happened over and over and over again. Well, what he didn't know, what he didn't know is that every day that the kid would walk through there, that Chasey would walk through there, this dog kept seeing him, and every time he saw him with that basketball, it would infuriate this dog that little by little every day he was digging a hole. He was digging a hole. But J.C. was so distracted by music, J.C. was so distracted by his basketball that he never saw it. So little by little, he's going, the weeks passed, and it came that day. That day came where he's going, he didn't have his beats on and he heard the dog, didn't think anything of it, he had already made a hole. He came under it, and there he went. Right after Jason. Jason got his basketball, started running faster than Michael Johnson. So maybe man remember Michael Johnson and saw so anybody fast. He's running, he's running. He sees his house a couple of blocks away. He sees the dog in the back. He's like, holy Jesus, what's gonna happen here? He's running so fast. He's running so fast that he's still trying to dribble at the same time. Finally, he just gets the ball. He's running, he's running, he's running. Here comes the dog. It's catching, it's catching, it's catching. And next thing you know, he's like, forget that. He throws the ball. He runs into the house and he makes it. The dog goes crazy over the basketball. Stay with me. So, Chase is looking through the window and the dog is devouring the ball. You see, he was never interested in J.C. He was annoyed at the bouncing. He was annoyed at the ball. And he says, when I get an opportunity, I'm going to tear that thing up because I'm tired of it. Pastor, what are you trying to tell me today? My question to do to you, what is your basketball today? What is it that you have in front of you that is distracting you or attracting you? What is it that you have in front of you that the enemy does not like you to have? Because you're good at it. You see, this kid was a baller. He was good at it. But the dog didn't like it. Well, I'm here to tell you that the enemy is the same way. Clearly says up there, be alert and a sober mind. Why does it say to be alert? Why does it say to be sober? Why? You know why? Because the enemy doesn't sleep. The enemy does not sleep. And if you don't pray... You're going to be praying. And he, 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 you know, a lot of us were going to school. We got our friends. We got our cliques. We got our sports. We got our, our classes, whatever the case may be. And that may be your basketball. Whatever you are so focused on, it may not even be something evil or dangerous. It may be something great. But whatever you're focused on, that's your ball today. And a lot of you here, in fact, I can honestly say that everybody here today has purpose. Everybody here today has purpose. Who is my basketball? Maybe it's your music. Maybe it's your music. What are you listening to that you're so distracted that you don't even see around you? You block everybody out of the hallways. 
You block everybody out at home. I don't want to hear mom. I don't want to hear dad. I don't want to hear my uncle. I don't want to hear my brother. I'm tired of hearing the abuse. I'm tired of hearing the curse words. I'm tired of it. But here's the thing. As you're blocking out, you're also blocking God out. And God wants to talk to you. But sometimes we're so distracted by our music. What about your friends? What about your friends? Are they really your friends? Or are you just a popular kid? Do you just like her because she's a cheerleader? Do you just like him because everybody likes him? Oh, he's got a lot of likes on Facebook. Oh, he's, everybody follows him. Follows him to the principal's office. <laughs> Who are your friends? Not the ones you call friends. Who are the ones that are really by you? Think about it. You have a lot less friends than you think. Trust me. You have a lot less friends than you think. Than you think. Social media. Could that be a basketball? Heck yeah. Half of your parents here don't even know how to get on some kind of website. How to get on your phone. Some of you have an eye, retina, DNA, forensic, big password, and you think you don't want your parents to get in and near it. I've never really understood that if mom's paying the bill. That's a whole other sermon for a whole other day. But what do you have in that phone that you want nobody to see? If right now we could search everybody's phone, what would we find? Your basketball, your distraction, your attraction maybe. Whatever the devil has planted a seed there to try to devour you. <laughs> Why does it say be alert of sober-minded? Now, maybe some of you may know this or not, but if I talk to the adults, the adults today and I said, what do you think when I think of the word sober? You know what people say? And said, not drunk. Let's be honest. If you're sober, you're not drunk. If you're not sober, you're drunk. Why does the scripture use that word? Now think about it. When someone is drunk or someone is high, whether you're on a molly, whether you're on that, that artificial marijuana or uh, synthetic marijuana, whatever you want to call it. Wait, um, Pastor, I just need to just get a couple of bars here just to get, get my parents, just to lose that edge. I'm so stressed, Pastor, you don't understand. Well, what's happening is that you're no longer sober. So because, because you did not know how to use Jesus as a lifeline, you've turned to something else to sober you down. But really what has happened, you've opened the door and so you fall into a trap. A trap of more sin. A trap of hidden secrets. A trap of doing something with someone that you regret the next day and say, God, why did I do that? Why did I take this and now I did that? It says alert and sober minded. Why? Because when you're drunk, and someone is behind the wheel, they no longer have the same reaction time. They can't think straight. They, 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 they don't have control over themselves. Whatever made them not sober has control over them. So I ask the question, youth, what's got control over you? Now don't answer. Think about it. Oh, Jesus does. Really? Or is it a friend? A friend that pulls you to do whatever he wants you to do for him. Oh, because I want to be part of the clique. I want to be part of the cool crowd. You were never intended to fit in, church. You were never intended to fit in. We're supposed to be misfits. That's why the Bible says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. You can dress, maybe. You can look like. You can walk like. But you were never really meant to blend in. And what's interesting when we talk about this and we see when, we, when it's this here, not only does it say your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring, roaring what? Lion. So not, not now we have the word sober and now we have a description of what he's describing the devil as. He doesn't say a horse. He doesn't say a snake. He says a lion. Why does he use a lion? Well, we have to understand the characteristics of a lion. So let's study that for just a minute, guys, because this is going to make a lot of sense to some of you. For, 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 for one, you've got to understand that the lion is a hunter. He's a hunter. He loves to hunt. Now, here's the thing about the lion. He'll hunt any time of day, but he prefers the night. You know why he prefers the night? Because he is so big, he wants to be hidden. 
Sounds like the devil. You, if you think that sin looks ugly, you're wrong. If you think that sin, sin it, 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 it's going to come around smelling bad, looking bad, tasting bad, you're wrong. I'm here to tell you that sin is probably the hardest thing to get rid of. You know why? Because it tastes so good, it feels so right, and it smells just fine. If sin was ugly, we'd all be perfect. So if I can understand what I'm going up against, then I know I'm not looking for a, a devil with a, a pitchfork. And I know I'm looking for my weakness. What is your weakness? That could be your basketball. That could be your basketball. A lion is a hunter. He loves to hunt at night. Here's another thing. A lion is very patient. You think you're patient? The lion will wait all night if he has to until you're alone. He sees the pack of of, of, of uh, whatever animal. It could be zebras. It could be deer. And you know what he does? He's just stopping and he says, I'm waiting to see who the weakest one is. And the weak one will tend to get away from the pack or fall behind. This is some of you here today. You're trying to catch up. You're trying to stay afloat. You're trying to be in the in crowd. Oh, I gotta have the right clothes. I gotta smell right. I gotta look right. I gotta have the beats. I gotta have everything just right. And by trying to do that, you're bouncing your ball and the devil's getting ready to devour you because you're being distracted. Pastor, but you're saying when you were in high school, and all, you didn't care to dress up? No, I'm not saying that. I love. I mean, don't get me wrong. Even today, I love it. But again, does it control you or do you control it? For anything that controls you then becomes your God. Pastor, you're saying my girlfriend can be my God? Yes. You're saying football can be my God? Yes. Pastor, you're saying that? that yes. He's very patient. He stalks you. He studies you. He waits till you're alone. Does anybody know what the word degenerate is? Anybody? Degenerate? Any smart kids in here? Just kidding. I know you're all Degenerate. Don't. What is it? Close, but not too, not too, not too close. I want to tell you what it is because I didn't know what it was. So don't feel so bad. Degenerate is an animal that walks on its toes. On its digits. These are your digits. These are your digits. It walks on its toes. The lion is a degenerate. It, it, it just, if you've ever seen it on Discovery Channel, have you ever seen it? What does it do? It doesn't come around all dumb. As big, as fast, and as powerful as that animal is, the king of the jungle, it is sneaky. Oh, who does that sound like? That sounds like us. At night, when you should be home at 12, but you're hoping mom and dad or your aunt or your uncle or your grandma's asleep. And what do you do? Degenerate. You become a degenerate at night. The only reason why we become degenerate is because we're sneaky because we're trying to hide something. This is exactly what the devil does. He's very sneaky. Again, what is your weakness? I'll be honest with you with me. I can go to a bar I'm not going to fall to temptation to, to smoking and drinking. You know why? That doesn't do me. That doesn't work for me. But everybody here has temptations. Everybody here has a weakness. You want to know what mine is? It's none of your business. It's you, me and God. The point I'm trying to say is that everybody here has a weakness. Everybody here has a weakness. And when you expose that weakness, you become prey. Now the devil smells blood. Ooh, I got him right where I want him. That's why it's so important. Jesus being as wise as he is, as powerful as he is. Did he ever sin? Did Jesus ever sin? No. No. The Bible says he became sin to die on the cross. No. What are you trying to get at, Pastor? Even him. He says, disciples, go two and two. Go three and threes. Go in sixes. He said, never go alone. Why? Because he understands that when you're alone, you're vulnerable. And some of you... Decide to go out and stop doing it and nobody's watching. Be careful. All you're doing is setting yourself up for prey. That's it. That's it. Go with a group. Get together with a, with a good group of people that have a good heads on their shoulders that got your back. Why? 
because it only takes one mistake. One mistake, guys, and you'll suffer many consequences after that. You know what I'm telling you? I know what I'm telling you. So what are you saying? I'm telling you you have to fight. Here you had the little punk being all tough, whatever, and here came the other one and popped him. You weren't prepared. You got to fight spiritually. How do I fight spiritually? Pray. Pastor, I don't know how to pray. Talk to Jesus. Pastor, I don't know. I don't even have a relationship. Start developing a relationship. He says, but I don't know those fancy words. Jesus is not asking you to talk fancy. He just says, what's in your heart? Talk to me. I'll tell you some advice I give some of the youth. Because nowadays, if you don't know how to talk, you know what they do? They text. Text Jesus. He texts back. It's called the Bible. He'll help you out. Text Jesus. Whatever you're feeling, boom, 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 send it and send it. He'll reply to you with the Proverbs. He'll reply to you with the Psalms. He'll talk to you. What's in your heart? He's not asking you to be perfect. He wants you to be real with him. Pastor, I don't like my life. Jesus, I don't like my life. I don't like my dad. I hate my mother. Talk to him. Because as you talk to him, you're emptying out the bitterness and resentment that you're holding in. That way God can pour into your spirit and heal that heart. Talk to him. Don't, don't set yourself alone. Don't, don't, what do you call it? Don't isolate yourself. And then you have thoughts of suicide. You have thoughts of this, thoughts of that. I'm trying to figure out, and I'm tired of this. Nobody understands it. No, we understand you, but we need you to open your mouth. You know the most, uh, the most terrible punishment that they do to a prisoner? It's called uh, uh, isolary, uh, what's it called? Um, isolation. That's it. Solitary confinement and isolation. You know why? Because if they can put you in a small place for a long period of time, it drives you nuts. Your, your, your mind starts playing games with you. And that's exactly what the devil tries to do. He tries to isolate you. Can you come, come over here, come over here to the corner so you can be easy to destroy. No, guys, that's when you call up your buddies. And I told you, we're family here. These are your family right here. You can't be saying, Pastor, I don't have any friends. You got about 200 friends here. Talk to each other. Help each other out. Get each other's back. Pray for each other. Text each other. Help each other. So you're not praying. Gotta keep going. What do we do mentally? Again, what are you watching? How do I fight back? What are you watching? Are you watching something that's gonna set up you, uh, set you up for failure? What are you listening to? Are you listening to constant garbage? Constant garbage, all of a sudden you start talking like it? I've seen students who are great. Poison their minds with what they're seeing, with what they're doing, with, with, with what they're saying, with what they're seeing. And next thing you know, boom, failures. I want you to understand, church, you're not born. I'm going to say this. I think I said it to the men. You're not born a failure. You're not, uh, you're not born a, a winner. And you're not born a loser. You're born a chooser. You get to decide your fate on what you decide to do every morning. You can't blame parents, you can't blame teachers, you can't blame the government, and you can't blame your pastor. You get, you have the power and the authority every day to say, I'm going to make my life what I need to make it. Physically, people, places, what, how do I fight physically? Again, I'm not necessarily talking about punches. I'm talking about, are you hanging around weeds? Are you hanging around people that have weeds? One good apple. You put them around 12 bad apples, or even one bad apple in front of 12 good apples, and what happens? They all rot. They all rot. How do I fight physically? Change your surrounding. If where you're hanging around, it, it makes you live in OCS, it makes you live suspended, it makes you live in the principal's office, it makes your parents come to you, get, get out of that, get out of that, get out of that situation. Get out of that situation. Put yourself in a, in a positive situation. Pastor, but if I hang around with the positive people, I'm not cool. Well, I can tell you right now, there are a lot of people in prison that are not cool. You figure it out. You figure it out. I know what I'm telling you, youth. Then the Bible goes on to say he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What is he steal? He steals our emotions. He can still steal our spiritual life, our relationship with Jesus. I understand, and I know you understand what I'm saying. And like I said earlier, church, I'm just about done. Like I said earlier, you want to know how many people grow up and they die and they never knew what their purpose was. Challenge of tonight. You're going to go back to your parents. Freak them out. Say, pops. Say, dad. Say, mom. 
Say, Grandma, what's your purpose? ¿Qué, mijo? <laughs> what? I dare to ask them, what's your purpose? And they're going to say, oh, I'm a teacher. Oh, I'm, no, no, I didn't say, what's your career? I said, what is your purpose in this life? If they can't answer you, holy Jesus. Start throwing them this sermon down. Grandma, you're going to have to pray, and now you're going to be praying. <laughs> so you go home and you ask your parents, what is your purpose? And you say, Pastor, but I don't know my purpose. Ask the Lord to tell you. What is your passion? What do you love to do? And I guarantee you, once you figure out what your purpose is, it's not work. My purpose is to preach to you all. My purpose is to be the pastor of this church. My purpose it, 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 it is to help the people that I help. You know what? I have no problem doing it. It's my purpose. Why? The Lord healed me from cancer. Gave me a second chance. And now I love to help the youth. Because I had cancer when I was eating. What is your purpose? You choose your career, but God chooses your calling. What is your purpose? Finally, we started with that verse in John 10.10. 10. Watch what John 10.10 10 says. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. What we just talked about. But here's the second part that we must understand right there, guys. If we're not sober, if we're not alert, guess what? He is going to steal. He is going to kill. And he is going to destroy whatever plan you get in your life. Guys, you are all already set on the path that you need to go. You have to decide, am I going to take this path or am I going to do whatever I want? And God has left you someone greater. His name is the Holy Spirit. All you have today is say, Holy Spirit, guide me. Because I get lost. I'm confused. I'm nervous. I don't want to make a mistake. I tell you what, I've made many mistakes in my life. But the biggest choices I've ever had to make, the decisions I make, I don't make them. I let God make them for me through the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk more about fasting another day. But I always fast and say, Lord, is this what I'm supposed to do? Is this what I'm supposed to do? That? Show me where I'm supposed to do it. That way I don't waste time. The worst thing you can do guys is waste time. You go to college, you become 25, 30 years old, and you're like, God, oh, what am I doing? Doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing. You wasted your time because you were pleasing somebody else. What does God say for you? Look at the last part of that verse, and I'll finish with that. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Another version says, and have it to the fullest. You want to live a long, great, successful, blessed life? You say, Pastor, money? No, 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 no. I know a lot of rich people that are miserable today. Pastor, but, but isn't that okay to have money? It's great to have money. But what's the point if you don't have the peace that comes with it? How do I get the peace when you find out your purpose? Well, how do I get the purpose when you establish your relationship? Stand to your feet, my friend. Pray or be prayed. Some of you have been prayed. Some of you are bleeding right now. Some of you are wounded right now. Some of you are hurt right now. But God is here, the doctor of doctors, and he wants to heal your wounds. Some of you say, I don't have any faith. We're going to sing this song that says, give me faith. But if there's anybody here, before we come up here, go ahead, my brother Philip. Before we come up here, if there's anybody here that does not have Jesus in their heart, you say, Pastor, I don't have Jesus in my heart. If something were to happen right now, I don't know where I would be. Would you shoot your hand and don't be shy and don't be embarrassed? We want to celebrate with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Thank you for being honest. Yeah, let's give them a second. All right, so what we're going to do, because we're going to start doing this, Max. We're going to start doing this not only on Wednesdays, but we're going to start doing this on Sunday. If you were one of the 15 that raised your hand, you come on up here first. I want you to come up here. Because we're going to pray with you. We're not here to embarrass you. We're here to celebrate with you. Come up here to the front. Come up here to the front. We want to celebrate with you. So only the ones that said yes first. Just come on up right here. Just come on up. Just come on up. If you said yes, that takes courage to you. That's courage. That's courage. That's courage. Come on up. Come on up. Right out here. If I can have, uh, oh my boy. Manny, can you get up here? Help me. Help me coach some of these people up, please. Where do I got up here? Alan, help me coach up some people, Alan. Let's do it, God. Let's do it, God. Eunice, yeah, come up. Let's, let's, 
and just kind of let, 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 let them come in through the front. They're going to pray with you. Get in the front of them and just pray with them. Now you're going to repeat this prayer after me. Y'all bow your heads and we're going to pray with you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I am a sinner, but you're my Savior. I'm tired of being prayed. There is purpose in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving my sins. Today, I choose to live for you. My past is erased. My future is bright. Jesus, I love you. And I will serve you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, four. 24, man. 24. All right. The altar is open. The altar is open. If there's anybody else that says, Pastor, I'm tired of being prayed. I'm wounded. I'm tired of bleeding. Come on up. Wherever you fit is fine. Give me five. Make your way, make your way up here. Be careful. If you fit, if you fit, if you don't, just stand right here along the line and just raise your hand right there where you're at. There's a few things.
do that again. Say, give me faith. Come on, even louder. Give me faith to trust what you say. And that you're good and your love is great. Thank you. 